What's up, everybody? Wait a minute. There we go. What's up, everybody? Josh Armijo here. I hope everybody's doing good and well and stuff. I got an Arsenal inventory update to do for you guys. CDs this time. And I'm going to be talking to you about a small handful of releases to come out this year from probably one of the best and most consistent working brutal death metal labels to come to come through extreme music. I, of course, am talking about Comatose Music. Uh, they are a record label based out of North Carolina, and this is a label that I've not only covered with reviews over the years here on this channel, but also with the addition of, of, of buying things from this label. Uh, so, so consistent. Consistent not only in the realm of putting out high quality releases from some of the best bands to, to represent death metal or brutal death metal, but also consistent as a distro. Very top of the line when it comes to shipping and handling, very professional, professionally done. I mean, Steve's a fucking genius and he really does do so much for the, for the, for the underground and the extreme music scene. It's just really, really awesome. And uh, like the previous years past, his label has been on a tear, putting out very, very solid ex extreme metal releases. And I got three albums to talk to you about here. And the first one I'm going to be talking to you about is something that's been in the works for quite a good while now. And this is finally seeing the light of day. I, of course, am talking about the brand new album from the band uh, Blasphemer, entitled Ritual Theophagy. Uh, this is their second full-length album. These guys are based out of Italy, and of course, Italy is a hotbed for producing high-quality extreme metal, uh, death metal, uh, very well-produced, well-established, and um, Blasphemer are one of the veterans of the group. Um, they've been around for a, for a good while now, but they've, they've only been recently putting out music. Um, the first time I had ever heard of Blasphemer was their 2008 debut uh, in The Inexistence of God. Uh, pretty much what you ex would, would expect from a band with a name like Blasphemer. Uh, blasphemous lyrics, really technical sort of guitar playing, fast drumming, really low guttural vocals. And it's been a while since we had heard a record from, from, from Blasphemer, and uh, Ritual Theophagy is their latest album. Uh, it's only 11 tracks, and it clocks in at around 28 minutes in length. And pretty much... This, this album has the if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of mentality going for it. And with Ritual Theophagy, it pretty much pretty much entails that this is something worth, worth the wait. Um, pretty much, this album has a really good pace going for it. I love the riff work. That's one thing that stands out to me the most about Ritual Theophagy, is the guitar riff work and playing, the very audible and crystal clear bass being done here. I think this is a very well mixed and produced sort of record, as would be a case for any sort of Italian brutal death metal release. Uh, really good riffs, really audible bass. Um, songs like Suicide for Satan, Obscuring the Holy Light, which is awesome for having an omen sample at the beginning, uh, Crucifix of Shit, uh, Fetishistic Idolatry of the Cross. I mean, yeah, really, really over the top when it comes to the lyrical content and delivery. And the vocals sound very, very low, very dirty, very guttural. I like this guy's approach. Uh, the drumming sounds great, too. They brought in Darren Seska, who I believe played on the last Incinerate record, and uh, he, he's just an overall top-tier drummer, and he brings in some really, really top-quality performances throughout the majority of Ritual Theophagy. Really awesome drum performance. Uh, if you're a fan of Italian Brutal Death Metal, if you are a fan of what Blasphemer has put out before, you're going to feel right at home with Ritual Theophagy. This is a really, really solid album and a very welcoming return for a band like this. So yeah, check out Blasphemer with Ritual Theophagy. Really, really good stuff. The next album I'm going to be talking to you about is another album that has been in the works for quite a while, and I have been waiting very, very patiently and long for a new album from this band, and once I found out there was going to be a new album, I was excited and stoked for it. And um, I, of course, I'm talking about the new album from Face of Oblivion, entitled Cataclysmic Desolation. Uh, these guys are based out of Mankato, Minnesota, and this band has a lot of sentimental value to me, not only for the fact that I thought that their first album, The Embers of Man, was really, really awesome, but this was one of the many, many bands that I saw back in 2011 for the Gore Growlers Ball. 
it was such an amazing experience getting to finally hear this music and get, getting to see it played live. It was such a fun time. I mean, getting to see their vocalist take the SpongeBob hat that I'm wearing right now, grab it from me, wear it on stage, and sing it along. That was just something I'll never, ever forget, and that was just a really incredible experience. Once again, it goes without saying, The Embers of Man was a really, really fun album. It had that sort of DIY quality and ethic going for it. But um, ever since then, there's been a shift change in the band, and by shift change, I'm talking about a new singer. I mentioned Incinerate earlier. They brought in Jesse, who happens to also sing for Incinerate. They brought him in to do vocals for the band, and once word got out there was going to be a brand new album from this, from Face of Oblivion, I was excited. And uh, Cataclysmic Desolation is their new album. It's 12 tracks, and the clock's in at around 34 minutes in length. And pretty much everything that I thought could have been improved with the first album is improved here. This is a complete 180 degree turn from what Face of Oblivion once sounded like. They sound better, stronger, quicker, more up to, up to speed. It, it just really is amazing. I mean, take this album with their first album and you'll see the night the day and night sort of comparison going on here musically i think this is phenomenal i love the guitar playing going on here the intricacy the technicality going on here with the riff work i mean hearing songs like embracing damnation seismic anomaly um walls of flesh just some really really intricate guitar playing going on here more technical and prowess than the previous record I would say and the bass work on here is very crystal clear and audible too I love that a lot the one problem I had about the first album was the drum work I know that it had that kind of a digitized sort of quality going for it but with this new album the drums are even better sounding than ever before I mean I can really attribute to this the sound of this record to somebody like Dave Otero who, who I believe mixed and produced this record really brought out the best in everybody's individual sound but as far as the drumming goes it sounds way way better it sounds way more fluid way more improved the the fills the the hyper blasting the the blast beats just a lot of great action going on here with this drum performance and it really does sound wonderful to listen to and as far as the vocals are concerned, Jesse does a very, very fine job of taking over for James Lee. I mean, James Lee is an incredible vocalist. He was the original frontman for Origin. But with Jesse, he's a completely different type of beast. And uh, he delivers some incredible vocal work here, uh, ly lyric-wise, vocal-wise, his delivery, his intensity, his passion. It's just really amazing to listen to. And um, hearing him do the vocal styles that he does, in addition to the layered kind of style of vocals, I know there's some additional vocal work being done here. I think the bassist does, does some additional vocal work here. You can hear that little bit of vocal layering going on here. But when it comes to Cataclysmic Desolation, this is a complete 180 degree turn for the band. I really think that this is their best material to date, and I am looking forward to them continuing forward in that sort of direction. I really think Face of Oblivion are coming into their own with an album like Cataclysmic Desolation, and if you were a fan of their first album, you'll find something to enjoy with um, Cataclysmic uh, Desolation. Really, really killer stuff. And uh, last but not least is an album that probably could end up seeing a spot in my personal top 20 of this year. Maybe even my top 10, who knows. Uh, this band is probably one of the best New York style death metal bands to ever exist and this this album is just so damn good. I'm glad we didn't have to wait a really long time for something like this to come out. I of course am talking about the new dehumanized album entitled uh, Beyond the Mind. Uh, yeah, this is their third full-length album. These guys are based out of Floral Park, New York, and these guys are very, very well-known and well-respected when it comes to New York death metal. I've had the privilege of getting to see these guys live a couple of times, more and more intense every single time. I mentioned Gore Growler's Ball once, and they were great then, and getting to see them a couple of years later at uh, Building Temples from Death Fest in Houston, so, so amazing. Um, but yeah really really incredible band putting out probably one of the best debuts to ever exist with prophecies foretold and then all all this decade plus later they returned in 2012 with control delete really amazing album showed that they still had it they still have the passion the fire to continue making music and it just really really sounded awesome and now here we are with the third album from um from dehumanized entitled beyond the mind uh, I believe it's a 39 minute long album, it's only 12 tracks, but um, yeah, Dehumanized, pretty much, well first off let me say this, 
This is probably one of the best album covers you'll ever see this year. I believe Tony Cold did the artwork for this. Uh, has that almost monstrosity sort of edge going for it. I really like the eyes coming out of the guy's head. Very, very awesome artwork. But as far as the actual album and music is concerned, it's just amazing. I think, I think once again, this is another album that has a really, really incredible sound and production job. Um, really good work bringing out the best in every single instrument and, and vocal delivery being done here. Um, musically, it's such an amazing record. I mean, listening to songs like Worthless Prosperity, the title track, Black Market 2009, uh, Last Words, it's just sensational. The guitar work on here is just immaculate sounding, especially when it comes to the more heavier, grittier, breakdown sort of parts that you hear throughout this record, especially on the track Black Market 2099. Unbelievable heaviness going throughout that song. The guitar playing is immaculate. The bass work sounds awesome. The drum work feels very natural and on point. I love how everything sounds here. The, the vocal deliveries and lyrics sound wonderful and are played out wonderfully. Uh, I believe uh, Danny Nelson from Malignancy does the vocal work on the track Beyond the Mind. And I believe the singer of Lethal Entity is on one of the tracks. Um, I think it's Last Words or Drawn My Blood. I forget which one off the top of my head, but... Really awesome guest vocal performances here, but as far as the actual band Dehumanize is concerned, this is another fantastic piece of, of, of New York's death metal here. Dehumanize are one of the best in the game, and uh, this album is definite proof that uh, this band has a reason to continue going forward. They still rule live, they are consistently working on touring and making music, and uh, they're just awesome at what they do. So yeah, definitely support Dehumanized, and definitely support Beyond the Mind by uh, Dehumanized, such a fucking killer death metal record. And with that being said, I'm going to conclude this video. I'm going to leave you links in the description to every band that I talked about on this video, including links to where you can purchase the physical CDs. You can buy all of these through Comatose Music. Um, there are also t-shirt options available, combos if you want to wear merchandising of the band. Uh, CDs are definitely available in addition to a really wide variety of death metal, black metal, and assorted other great things uh, that, are, that are located within the Comatose web store. There is a lot to be found there. So, um, yeah, definitely support this great record label and all the bands and artists that, that represent it, especially the ones that I talked about here. So, yeah, uh, if you also happen to have heard any of these releases, definitely let me know what you think and how you feel about them. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for checking out my channel. And until the next time, Army Hill out.